The other day I got a test done to test my resting metabolic rate and the test came back that I have a slow metabolism. After being incredibly bummed out for a bit and basically eating my feelings, I got to learning more about metabolism and why it is that my metabolism could all of a sudden be slower. And so I wanted to make this video for others that might be feeling like me, bummed about the fact that their metabolism might seem to be slow. Maybe you're somebody that thinks that your metabolism is slowing down with age. Maybe Maybe you think that you're somebody that's doomed to just have a slow metabolism for the rest of your life because all the friends around you seem to eat whatever they want and you like look at a piece of cake and gain 10 pounds. If that's you, keep watching this video because I'm gonna answer some of your main questions. So what is metabolism and does it really slow with age? There's two common myths going around when it comes to metabolism. Myth number one is that you are either born with a fast or slow metabolism and there is absolutely nothing that you can do to change it. I'm gonna tell you why that's not exactly true. And the second myth that we often hear is that your metabolism decreases with age. And that's not true either. Research shows that our metabolism doesn't technically slow down until about age 60. And what we're actually experiencing is a decrease in muscle mass and also just moving less. When I'm talking about metabolism in the context of this video, I'm talking about how many calories you're able to burn throughout a day, which is also known as total daily energy expenditure. Why does it seem like some people can just eat and eat and eat and eat and not gain weight, whereas other people, they look at a burger and they just like blow up. What's going on here? So your total daily energy expenditure or the amount of calories that you're going to burn in a day comes down to four things. Your BMR, your NEAT, your TEF, and your EA. I'm just using the abbreviations here and we're going to go fast. BMR, this makes up about 70% of the calories you burn in a given day. And what's cool about these calories is that you really don't have to do jack shit to burn them. These are the calories that you need to keep you alive. This is why people say don't go below your basal metabolic rate or don't eat less less than your BMR because this is when the systems of your body start to break down because you're not giving your body enough of the energy it needs to just live. You can increase your BMR by doing things like making sure you're not constantly dieting. This is absolutely gonna slow down your metabolism because your body's gonna adapt to surviving off less calories. The other thing you can do is take a long-term effort to put on a little bit more muscle mass or muscle tone so I don't scare any of the dainty ladies out there about the muscle tone. I didn't want to scare get anyone away. Why am I talking like this? I don't know. So why is putting on more muscle going to help you increase your BMR? Well, what we know is that one pound of muscle burns six calories a day just to sustain itself. Whereas one pound of fat on your body requires only two calories a day to sustain itself. So two people the same height, how 50 pounds, one with more muscle mass, one with less muscle mass, the person with more muscle is always going to be burning more calories. That is why I'm such a fan of making sure you're getting in enough protein and strength training because both of those two things in combination is going to help you hold on to much muscle as possible and make sure that you can add more muscle tone. We're going to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Element, which is the supplement that I choose to drink first thing in the morning. Boom. So Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix you can put in your beverage of choice and it includes all the major electrolytes you need and none of the junk that you don't need. A lot of other electrolyte drink mixes on the market include things like additional sugar, added fillers, and added calories that are not gonna do much in terms of your overall health goals. Element has none of that. I first heard about Element from my trainer, Alex Bush from Physique Development, when I was complaining about headaches getting in the way of my strength training workouts in the morning. He recommended Element to me. I started drinking it first thing in the morning before my workouts, and I had more energy and no headaches ever since, and I've been using it for a year now. Element is used by everyone from Olympic athletes to everyday moms moms and dads. Right now, Element is offering viewers of this video a free sample pack to try all eight flavors with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with the purchase of any Element order. You can get yours now by going to drinkelement.com slash Juliana. This deal is only available through my link, so head to drinklmnt.com slash Juliana. My current favorite flavors are the grapefruit and watermelon flavors, and I also like to get their chocolate flavors, and it's like having a cup of hot chocolate at night, but only like five calories, which is amazing. Thank you to Element for sponsoring this video. Yeah. Next thing is NEAT. NEAT is the calories that you burn subconsciously from things like fidgeting. Like me being a hand talker, using all these gestures, like it's almost like I can't just like, if I put my hands behind my back, I'm gonna like talk like this, I can't do it. But me being a hand talker, that adds to my NEAT. It's the calories you subconsciously burn from things like fidgeting. This can have a ton of variability. So like almost I think 1800 calories a day in variation. So someone that fidgets a lot versus somebody that just lays on the couch, scrolling their 
phone. They're gonna have very different neats. Wow, Juliana, neat fact. I know. TEF, this one burns 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. And it's my favorite one because it's the calories that you burn from things like eating. I love burning calories from things like eating. What we know is that eating protein has a thermic effect of about 20 to 30%. So what that means is that let's say I eat 100 calories from protein, like I'm eating straight up egg whites, 100 calories of egg whites. It's gonna require about 20 to 30 calories of energy for me to just digest that protein. So it's really like I'm only eating seven calorie. Kind of cool, right? We also know that fats have a thermic effect of about 2 to 5% and carbs 5 to 10%. Um, definitely we're going to see things like ultra processed fats and ultra processed carbs be on the lower end of that spectrum. They require less energy from the body to digest. That's why you often hear people say, oh, focus on eating whole foods. One reason for that is because the thermic effect of whole foods is higher. So just eating whole foods is going to require more energy from your body to digest. So it's like kind of like, I don't know if I want to call it magic calories, but it's like you're burning like unicorn magic calories just by eating whole foods. Calories that you wouldn't be burning eating the same amount of calories from eating ultra processed foods. And then the last one is your exercise activity or EA. This is only about 5% of your metabolism or total daily energy expenditure. So this is a huge trip up with people new in their fitness journey is they think, oh, I'm just going to go to the gym and I'm going to go on the treadmill for 30 minutes and whoa, I burned so many calories. It's like, nope, you didn't really burn that much and you could literally eat that amount of calories in 30 seconds or at least I know I could so it's like 30 minutes on the treadmill 30 seconds of eating it's crazy how you really can't out train a bad diet another thing to point out when it comes to metabolism is that hormones of course play a role I mean if I inject you with insulin or cortisol you're gonna gain fat there's no doubt about that so now you might be thinking okay like what are you gonna do about your slow metabolism Juliana and what are the things that I can control and do to increase my metabolism Let's Let's talk about it. So the first thing that you have a ton of control over that you can do right now to make sure that your metabolism stays intact and doesn't get any slower is you can focus on your diet. So as I kind of briefly mentioned before, making sure you're getting enough protein. I'm just gonna throw the ballpark out there because we're not gonna go in depth into protein in here, but one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass is what we're aiming for when we're talking about enough. We wanna make sure that we're eating enough protein to sustain the muscle mass on our body, even when we might be in a calorie deficit and that's the equation for that. The other thing that you can do is make sure that you shift more of your calories in a daily basis to whole foods. Because as I mentioned before, whole foods are gonna have a higher thermic effect. They're also gonna make you feel fuller longer. So that's just like great. The next thing you can do is you could focus on trying to figure out ways to move more. I wear a step counter. So I've got the Apple Watch on and I'm mindful of how many steps I'm taking in a day. And I try to aim for about 8,000 steps a day. I'm trying to make sure you move a ton. This is a big reason why people think their metabolism metabolism just slows down is they just get lazier as they get older. And like, think about that. I remember like in my twenties, it was like, yeah, let's go out. Let's go to a club, whatever. And now like in my thirties, I'm like, yeah, let's watch a show. Let's do nothing. Let's put the kids to bed and lay on the couch. So yeah, I'm definitely moving less than I was before. So am I gonna take up clubbing again in my 30s? No, but maybe I will just be more mindful about how many steps I'm getting on the step tracker because I kind of lost sight of this for a while. And I think I was like at a point where I was getting like only 2000 steps a day, 3000 taking care of my newborn. If you're new here, I just had a baby three months ago. Thank you, I know. But yeah, I definitely haven't been moving as much. So that could be a huge reason why my metabolism has slowed down. And then how you work out can play a huge role in this too. I'll be the first to admit I, during my pregnancy, I definitely haven't been strength training. It hasn't been a focus of mine. And when it does make sense, I'm absolutely going to start strength training again. And I'm going to start to try to build more muscle back up, muscle that I had lost during my pregnancy because man, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I was like sick during my pregnancy, like throwing up every day, sick, not strength training. It was rough. So I definitely lost some muscle from that. So that's probably why my metabolism has decreased on this test. And then the last thing you can do to really focus on that is your morning and nighttime routine. Stress definitely has an impact on your hormones. Sleep definitely has an impact on your hormones and focusing on reducing stress and improving sleep are really the most high leverage things that you can possibly do to make sure that you are living a healthy lifestyle. So simple things like don't get on social media first thing in the morning and having some kind of nighttime routine to wind down from the day, not scrolling TikTok, you know, 30 minutes before you go to bed. I'm sure there's other things we can talk about here 
here. What are your favorite nighttime and morning routines? Let me know in the comments below. Do you have a fast metabolism, slow metabolism? What have you done to improve your metabolism over the years? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.